Hello, Chris Gabrielson here, one of our technical leaders in the enterprise switching space of Cisco TAC. And in this video, we will discuss the recommended process of replacing a Catalyst 9200 or Catalyst 9300 in an existing switch stack. Start off by logging into the switch stack that contains the failed device and verifying the install mode. Using the command show version or the command show boot, determine what image type the stack is using. If you see an image name starting with cat9k and ending in .bin, this indicates the switch is booted in bundle mode. Otherwise, if the switch is using packages.conf as the booted file name, this indicates the switch is in install mode. Cisco recommends all Catalyst 9K switches use install mode in order to take full advantage of all software features. Cisco also recommends switches in install mode have the configuration Software Auto Upgrade Enable, which will allow for automatic software upgrades of the replacement switch. If the failed switch is still powered on and operational, validate the switch is not the active switch in the stack using the Show Switch CLI. Only if the switch you are replacing is the active is it recommended to perform a redundancy force switchover to ensure a graceful failover of the control plane before removal. Regardless of active, standby, or member state, you should also verify all of the stack ports are up and have a neighbor using the show switch neighbor CLI. If the stack ring is not complete, it's strongly recommended to ensure the stack ring is fully connected. Otherwise, you may risk a stack merge during the replacement, which will result in a reload of the existing switches in the stack. With everything validated, physically go to the switch stack and identify the one you will replace. You can press the mode button to cycle through the display options in order for these switch numbers to be shown represented by the front panel ethernet ports. Each switch will only light up one local interface which represents its number in the stack. Start the replacement by removing power to the switch in question and then removing the data stack ports. If performing this operation on a Catalyst 9300 stack using power and data stacking, make sure both the power to the power supplies and the power stack cables are removed before removing the data stack cables. This side-by-side -side shows the difference between power and data stack cables, with the power stack cables having a green tag on one end and yellow on the other. Once the switch has been replaced, reverse this process to reconnect it. Start by connecting the data stack cables first before the switch is powered on. Do not plug the data stack cables of a switch that is already booted into an existing stack. This will trigger a stack merge, which will reload the switches. Optionally, you can watch the new switch boot and discover other switches in the stack. This may take several minutes depending on the image in use. If software auto upgrade enable was configured, the stack should discover a version mismatch of the new member and automatically copy over the required images and boot configurations. Once this copy is complete, the stack will automatically reload the newly added switch. Depending on the starting and ending image, this process may take several minutes beyond normal boot times if firmware and FPGA upgrades were also required as part of the software upgrade. After the second reboot, use the Show Switch CLI to validate the switch has successfully joined the stack. This concludes this video. Thank you for watching.